Hey gang, I'm bringing you one of my very favorite problems today. Are you weird when you have favorite problems? No. Slipping, tipping, it's a friction problem, okay? So the goal here on this problem, you have two boxes stacked on top of each other. If each box weighs 150 pounds, what does the box weigh? 150 pounds. Um, find the force P where motion occurs. Now this is usually where the wheels fall. If I ask my students, what does that mean? What does motion occur mean? If I push on that box, what can happen? That's why I like these problems because it doesn't state to you in the problem statement what can happen. You've got to come up with it on your own, okay? So what can happen here? If I push on this box, if I push here, huh, what's going to happen? Well, okay, number one, number one, the whole stack can slide, right? So I'm going to find out the force P to make the whole stack slide, like the thing stays together and just slides, right? Um, what else can happen? Um, ooh, the top box could just slide off and this box could stay still. Okay, so number two, top box slides, and I'll just put only, right? It's the only one that slides. Uh, anything else could happen? Well, I could push on it. What about it? The pile could just kind of like tip over, right? Ah, okay. So number three, the stack could tip. And I guess there technically there is a there is a fourth case, and that is this box could stay still, and I could push on it, and just the top box would tip. I don't think that could possibly happen because it's so close to the bottom down here. But you know what? Just for fun, we'll work it out and see what it is. But I don't, there's like no way that would happen. That'd be like trying to tip your refrigerator by pushing on it, you know, a foot off the floor. It's not going to tip over. You got to be up tall, right? So top box tips. Okay. So what we got to do, the goal here is to find a P for each one of these. Okay. So we got to find P for that one. What is P for this guy? P for that guy and P for that guy. Okay. And which one are we going to go for? We're going to have four different numbers over there. Which one are we going to select for the force P where motion occurs? The smallest one, because that's the one that's going to happen first, right? You'll never get to those other conditions because that first motion happens first, okay? So let's, uh, let's put our weights on here just for funsies. There's a 150 pounds, and there is 150 pounds, okay? So this solving statics problems for friction is all, all, all about the free body, okay? So let's try the whole shack shimmies, I mean the whole stack slides, okay? So we'll look at this as one big box, okay? So here's one big box. So what we're assuming for the whole stack to slide is there will be no sliding here. This is like very frictitious in there, right? This is, so this is like a, look, box to box is 0.65. And box to floor is 0.35. Okay, so this is grippy, and this is slippy, right? Because it's it's got a lower coefficient of friction. Okay, frictitious, not a word, but that's okay. Okay, here we go. The box weighs 300 pounds. Okay, because it's two boxes. Here's our force P. Okay. What else is going on? Well, there's a normal floor. Box push on floor, floor push on box. Okay, like that. And then the box wants to slide that way. And so friction's like, no, nah, I don't think so, man. So friction, he's opposing us. He looks like that. Now we're looking about motion occurring. So we're at impending motion. So that friction down there is fun friction. And the friction on the floor is 0.35. And there you go. So let's see, what is N going to be? Some of the force in the Y. I got 300 down. I got something going up. N has to be 300, doesn't it? Which we can plug whoop, right in there. And friction force has got to be equal to P. So we're fixing to get P right here, right? P is equal to, clear, 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 0.35 times 300 equals 105. So P is 105 for the whole stack slides, okay? 
It takes 105 pounds to make that happen, okay? Well, okay, fine. How about top box slides only? Okay, top box slides. So let me redraw my free body here. I'll get rid of this because now we're just talking about one box. He's 150 pounds. Um, what else do we know here? Well, um, N now is going to be, N is going to be 150 pounds now. And let's see, the static coefficient of friction there is 0 0.65. So 0 0.65. And so P now for just the top box to slide is, how much is that? Okay. 150 times 0.65 equals 97.5 statics radio. Tune in now and we'll get frictitious up in here. Okay. 97.5. Where what that's top box. 97.5 pounds. Okay. Well, the whole stack is not gonna slide. Now this guy's winning, right? The top box slides. Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, next is number three. The stack could tip. Okay, so if this pile of boxes here starts to tip, right, where is it going to rotate about? Well, it's going to rotate about this corner right there, isn't it? So let's do this. Let's draw a box. We're back to the big box again. Okay, I'm going to call him 300 pounds. Okay, and it's going to tip about that corner right there, right? So you've got like a normal force there and a friction force there. And then here's force P over here. Okay. Whenever you have tipping, you need to think moment equation, don't you? Okay. For the moment equation, all right, I'm going to take the moment at this corner because it's trying to rotate. Okay. So think about tipping, rotate, moment, rotate. Okay. That goes together. So here we go. Let's sum the moment. I'll call it point C for the corner. C is for corner. And what do I have? I have the 300, which rotates me positive. So 300 times how far away is that, right? It's a 1.5, isn't it? 1.5. And then the P rotates me, uh, that's negative, minus P times how far away is that? Um, it's five, isn't it? Okay. So that's 450 divided by five, P is equal to 90 pounds. Ooh, we've got a new winner, don't we? It only takes 90 pounds of force to make that stack start to tip over, okay? And then we can talk about, let's do, let's do crazy town here, because um, somebody will get me in the comments on this if they don't, if I don't check it. They'll be like, but you should have worked that other one. It could have happened. Yeah, it could have if this corner was like glued together. I don't think it's going to happen, but let's just try it, okay? So now the box is only like that big, okay? So now we're talking about just the bottom box stays still and only the top box tips. Because this little distance here is what? It's 4.5. It's only, it's only a half a foot, right? 0.5. Here's the 150. Okay, that's going to have to be like super glued down for this to stay over here, right? Okay, so I'm going to take that moment about that corner again. Uh, moment about the corner is equal to zero is equal to... 150 times 1.5 minus P times 0.5. Oh, goodness. Okay. That's going to be, uh, that's 450, isn't it? I can, I do the math in my head. P is equal to 450 pounds. Okay. So, ain't no way that's happening. Okay. 450 pounds. That's never, ever going to happen, is it? So the thing I like about this problem is, is you've got to come up with these scenarios right here on your own. When it says is, if motion can occur, you've got to think to yourself, okay, what does that mean, motion? Can it slip? Can it tip, right? So you got to go through all of those scenarios, okay? There's lots of problems like these. I really like these for a test because this tells me the people that can think versus the people that are just trying to memorize equations. So can you think? I hope so. All right, I hope this helps, and I'll see you back here next time, gang.